Machine Max 1.2 by the street is based on the more widely known 3D Studio Max. On launch, the G-Max GUI displays a 4 viewport layout. The active viewport has a yellow order. Pressing W operates a maximized minimized toggle for the active viewport. Towards the bottom right of the GUI, the select region toggle is set for crossing selection. This mode selects objects within a drag region, plus any objects crossing region boundaries. Left click and hold on the snap toggle, just to the right, displays a snap flyout. 2.5D snap mode is active. The cursor will snap the projections of object edges or vertices onto the active grid. Right click on the snap toggle launches a grid and snap settings dialog. A vertex setting snaps the cursor to vertices of mesh objects or shapes. Pressing Ctrl X activates Expert Mode, clearing the vast majority of the standard GUI from the display. Methods, shortcuts, key commands and combinations operate identically in Expert or Standard Mode. To ensure compatibility with CNC Toolkit, the customized menu is accessed and the unit setup menu item is selected. A unit setup dialog opens to establish an appropriate unit setting. The generic units option is selected. This setting will persist, so need only be set once. Reference geometry is loaded. A similar file is provided with a free CNC for free ebook. This scene will help demonstrate navigation and operation of the GUI. The default GMAX GUI uses a render smooth display for the perspective viewport. Right click on the viewport label opens a viewport properties menu. Rendering method is set in this menu. Several other shading modes are available. A wireframe option draws outward facing geometry as wireframe. The other option shows a submenu of additional render settings. A facet setting renders 3D geometry using unsmooth flat shading. This displays the actual smoothness 3D geometry will embed in G-code. Smooth and highlight blends edges between faces to display smoothness on screen. For CNC work, it's important to confirm 3D surfaces actually have appropriate smoothness. Pressing G toggles display of the home grid. Pressing T switches the display to a top view. Pressing F switches to a front view. If the scene display is out of position when the view is switched, press E, executes zoom extents to center visible geometry in the view. Pressing L switches to a left side view. Pressing P restores the default shaded perspective view. Other view options include V for bottom view, K for back view, R for right side view, and U for an isometric user view. Pressing V activates Arc Rotate. A trackball appears in the center of the viewport. Left click and drag rotates the viewport. Click and drag with a mouse wheel pans the viewport. Rotating the mouse wheel zooms the viewport, or bracket keys can be used to zoom by increment. Escape or right click deactivates most viewport tools. When the selection is active in the view, right click anywhere in the view displays the quads menus. These menus access frequently used tools and context sensitive or user defined functions. Some additional geometry in the scene is unhidden. With nothing selected, pressing 3 toggles display of the command panel. This panel gives access to many shape and object creation or modification functions. A right-click menu configures the command panel to dock or float. Floating panels are easily sized or positioned. Six tabs on the command panel address object creation and animation. Create panel functions generate 2D, 3D and helper objects. Functions on the Modify panel edit and combine primitives to produce more complex geometry. 
hierarchy and motion panel functions address object linking and animation. Display panel functions control object visibility and viewport interaction. The utilities panel gives access to plugin and max script functions. The display panel is opened. I by category group provides options to quit the I elements by type. Activating the shapes checkbox hides all shapes, isolating them from work in the view. The helper's checkbox has the same effect on helper objects. This scene contains a variety of tape helper objects. Tape helpers assist in extracting or establishing object dimensions. With a modify panel active, selecting a tape helper displays related information on the panel. An icon indicating the tape helper's pivot is displayed. Pressing minus enlarges the pivot icon, and pressing equals reduces the icon size. The modify panel shows information about the selected object. Object names are displayed at the top of the panel. A drop-down modifier list shows available modifiers. The modifier stack keeps a cumulative history of object creation parameters and modifiers. When objects are created or modified, creation parameters, options, and modifier settings are displayed or adjusted lower down the panel. In this case, the selected tape has a length of 89.1 mm corresponding to the dimension on the motor datasheet. The display panel is used to hide tape helpers and unhide the shape object. Pressing L switches to a left view of the scene. Geometry is hidden in the hide by category group to isolate the shape. A constructed or imported shape is often the start point for creating 3D geometry or tool paths. This type of object does not require 3D geometry for tool path generation.